Hey guys, no introduction, let's just go and make this. Here's my attempt of making a tassel garland out of these tablecloths. As you can see, I will be working on the floor. I will be using my cutting mat, X-Acto knife, and metal ruler. I tried two more different ways how to cut my tablecloths, and this method, so far, the best, in my opinion. Scissors were not cutting my tablecloths um, straight and the layers would slip. I didn't like that. With this guy over here, I'm not sure what's the correct uh, name paper cutter that you lift this thing and you cut. Uh, this thing does not cut tablecloths uh, straight through even though it would have been such a great idea. Maybe if I bought a larger cutter, maybe that would have made a difference, but it didn't work with this one. So I unfolded my tablecloth just like that, long ways. I am laying on my mat and I will be cutting strips of inch and a half wide. So I am just measuring by these uh, measurements that my mat has. I don't have to use um, any of the rulers and mark any of the you know markings. So just line your ruler, put your body pressure on the ruler, making sure that your tablecloth does not run away from you. And with the tip, start cutting your tablecloths. Then I will be separating my strips and this is what we will be working with. Let's cut the rest. Be careful when you're cutting with X-Acto knife. You don't want this to happen to you. Strips are cut and separated. Now to the next step. To build my garlands, I would have to have some kind of base. So I am going for this safety fence in white color. This is a safety netting for I don't know, chickens usually, that's what I got from the description or for the gardens or something around the yard. I got this on Amazon. I will leave a link in the description under this video. I will unpack and I will decide how wide I want to cut my uh, base. I think I will go for two uh, squares, one, one, two, something a little bit wider, not too thin and we'll go from there. There are different ways that you can construct these garlands. You can absolutely use a curling ribbon or a string. String these streamers on the string and you're good to go. I want to try something more fancier with this fancing over here. I constantly see these garlands on a fancier, pretty awesome looking balloon garland setups. And if you look closely, if that setup includes these garlands, these garlands have a really wide base and this is how they make these garlands look so wide, luscious and voluminous. Just because of the base that they have, they string those streamers in different locations a little bit further from each other and this is how they get that awesome fluffy look out of them so i want to try this today we'll see what's gonna happen i'm using a step ladder and one of my frames to tie the base to this way it will be much easier to string all of the streamers to assemble my streamers i am grabbing one streamer folding in half, feeding these two tails through the hole, opening up and feeding these two tails through the loop and pulling the knot tight. There we go. Okay, as you can see, I am tying these streamers up front. Now we have to move to the inside of the base and string uh, the streamers from the middle and from the back. So in one row right here, we're gonna have three streamers. Just measured, so this garland turned out to be four feet long. To shorten this uh, 
section of my fencing, I will be cutting right over here. And to hide this, I will be adding two more streamers just to tie everything together and make it really neat. working with Tuftix balloons. I am working with a blush color. I only have three sizes of balloons here, 11, 5, and 24. Starting with 11 inch, I am grabbing two balloons and inflating them into different sizes. Something like this. Next step is absolutely up to you. If you want your balloons to be on the rounder side, then press them against the floor yourself. Uh, table anywhere you work. Tie balloons together into a pair as close as possible together because later on we will need these next balloons to construct our balloon garland. It's going to be a little bit tougher for me to do today to tie next balloons because I cut my finger but we will see, we'll, we'll make this happen. My pairs are inflated, next thing is to combine them into clusters. I will be making clusters out of three pairs of balloons. So I am crisscrossing them and interwining them together a few times, adding my third pair into my balloons, interwining around different balloons pretty well, making sure that nothing is going to slip out and go places. And here I have a beautiful looking balloon cluster. Now let's inflate a few more of these and we will move on to the construction of our garland. To inflate my five inch balloons, I will be using my Legenda inflator. I am putting up a timer on the screen because I want my five inch to be the same size. So I am inflating them and then tying them into a pair. Repeating that a few more times. Once I have my pairs inflated, I am crisscrossing them and interwining two pairs of five inch balloons into a quad like this. For now, I think I want to create mini balloon garlands out of five inch quads. So simply grabbing a 260 balloon and tying to one of the quads. Make this quad flat, grabbing another quad and placing right on top. Stretching my 260 and wrapping around the balloon. Next quad, again on top, stretching a 260, wrapping around this top balloon and going to the bottom and wrapping around bottom and coming back to the top. Top, bottom, top. And this is basically what you will be doing. So every other quad you have to go down and wrap around the bottom balloon to secure your uh, balloons even better. The size of your mini garlands will depend how many quads you will include in the garland. As soon as you're done constructing your garland, you just stretch the rest off to 60 that you have left and wrap around one of the balloons a few times. This will completely lock the 260 and will secure all the balloons together for sure. Before constructing my base, let's inflate white gold orbs of balloons. White gold is not exactly the same color as rose gold streamers that I have uh, as my garland streamers. They are a little bit different, but hopefully everything will combine and work together great at the end. Here's how I am doing this. To save myself a little bit of time, I will start inflating my orbs with a foil inflator. Foil inflator will not inflate your orbs balloons all the way. I will finish it off at the end with a hand pump. Let me show you. Foil inflator is great for foil balloons, something like flowers, hearts, or any other figuring like, because this inflator feels the balloon and it stops when it should stop and it will not over inflate your balloon. So let's inflate this balloon till whatever this inflator will inflate the orbs. 
how far this inflator will inflate orbs of balloons. Now grabbing my hand pump and flattening up all of the wrinkles on this balloon. Oh my word. Okay, when inflating orbs balloons, so don't rush. Slowly inflate because this is what will happen. Let's try this again. This time I won't rush. This is how your orbs balloon should look. All of the seams of this balloon is nice and flat and I can only see very little wrinkles on those seams, like really, really micro. This is the correct way to inflate orbs balloons. Okay, for the first part of this setup, I will be using this nut lamp that I purchased on Amazon. If you want something from a local store, you can try Walmart and I guarantee you will find something like this cheaper than I bought on Amazon. I will still leave this knot lamp uh, link in the description under this video. Why I like knot lamps? Because they have heavy bases and a thin um, pipe in the middle. So here's what I'm doing. I want to have a part of my balloons here, extend some from the ceiling and connect them maybe with my streamers or maybe with flowers. I haven't decided yet. I have this vision in my head. We'll see if it's going to work. So what I'm doing is I am grabbing a cluster of balloons, putting right on the knot lamp. Then where I put the knot lamp, these two balloons need to crisscross and lock all the balloons on the knot lamp, something like this. Obviously start from the bottom and work yourself up um, all the way up. <laughs> you need to work on an organic portion of this uh, balloon column right here. To do that, I am grabbing clusters of balloons, finding those necks, going to the column, finding those necks where I want to attach an extra cluster and tying them together this garland to the side all the way here probably a little bit at the bottom on the other side and extended on the top as well these orbs I will be using a 260 balloon and these orbs as you can see right over here they have a hole at the end of their necks which is super super nice because it will make my life so much easier so I'm taking a 260 stringing through that hole tying a knot or you don't even have to tie a knot tie two ends of 260s together and now you have a loop and I can attach these balloons anywhere I want. Okay, I've never hung any types of streamers from the ceiling. I've never worked with them. Uh, so I think it's going to take me a little bit of time to figure out how to properly place them and where to place them. Let's just play around and see what's going to happen. Okay, this is the best that I could do. I will probably switch or remove this little guy over here. I don't know if I like how it looks. But here's probably a thing that I've learned uh, while working with these two uh, garlands is that you need to hang garlands first and then work with balloons. I think it would be so much, so much easier. I don't know how many times I replaced these garlands, but this is so far is the best way uh, for me to have them okay i want to try to attach these marquees uh, tiny letters on the wall going from the top to the bottom and i am using this uh, really uh, sticky tape we'll see if that's going to work uh, i don't know what's going to happen to my walls my husband is here you can see his head <laughs> he approved so let's try this out 
Now this ladder holds so far. It got stuck to the wall really nicely uh, the first time I tried to stick it on. It doesn't move. I'm just very curious what's gonna happen to my walls. Just wall. This is next. <laughs> Went down. I thought we were gonna go sideways. That looks even better. Isn't it? Dear husband, clear the view. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this, this, this is not the correct spacing. For I know. I don't like that. You want to fix it? You can try to remove the eye. Huh? No, I don't want to make Mess. it worse. Since I'm not having anything on this side of the chair, I decided to go with chicken wire and insert some of the flowers to kind of balance everything out and make this setup even more wow. So I put a chicken wire, tie the chicken wire to the leg of the chair, and then I pinned a safety pin and tied my chicken wire with fishing line to that pinned safety pin. Let's insert some flowers. Moment of truth, we're gonna try to remove the letter. Uh oh. Damaged? No. The paint didn't get damaged, right? It's okay. The, the first letter I really glued with a whole bunch of donuts. But the rest of the letters, I just had two donuts on each letter, which is much, much easier to unglue. This is it, you guys. This is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try my best to help you out. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button down below for more videos. Also, for this setup behind me, I used one and a half bags of 11 inch balloons and three bags of five inch balloons. I am not giving you the amount of orbs, but my word, I love it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. I will really, really appreciate every single one. I hope all of you will have a wonderful day and I will see you back very soon. Bye.